Hi Thinkers, welcome to the Android development course on ThinkX Academy. In the previous tutorial of this Android development series, we have already discussed how to connect Firebase to your application. We have created our e-commerce app project. And now in this tutorial, we're going to use the Firebase authentication fe feature to use to basically register the users and to make them log in inside of our application. So primarily in this part of this tutorial, we are going to register the user. So whenever the user will click the register button, the email and the password of that user is going to get stored in the Firebase. So the first thing we need to do is here, instead of toast message, I will just write a function which is login to Firebase function, right? And here I'm going to write register to Firebase. If I'll hover my mouse on them, you can see there is the option create method login to Firebase. So I will just quickly create these two methods here. You can see these are private. We are concerned with this function here, but before starting with the actual writing the code of this backend code of this application, we need to perform some of the steps. The step one is to add the internet permission to this application. And the way to do is you can see there is an Android manifest.xml file, which you can see it lies in the resources folder. Right here is the Android manifest.xml. Now inside here we have the manifest tag, we have the application tag. Remember that all the permissions are added before this application tag. So in order to add a permission, because we know that uh, in Android we need to provide the permissions to that a particular app is using. For example, if an app is using a permission which is to use the internet, we are going to use users permission and we will specify Android name attribute and you can see it is showing me a bunch of suggestions here which are uh, all the permissions that uh, an Android app can use, right? For example, access Wi-Fi state is used to uh, get the state of the Wi-Fi whether you are connected to the internet or not. We will use it in the upcoming tutorials also. This application is eligible to use that permission, right? So I will type internet here and it is Android dot uh, permission dot internet and I will close this tag. So now we will have to go to our Firebase project, which is here e-commerce app. And here we need to enable something here. We have the inside of the build. You can see we have authentication. Just click on it, go to the sign in method and here go to the email password and click enable and save the changes. Now let's move on to the next step, which is a very important step here. We have the documentation of Firebase, right? So we do not need to write the whole code because as uh, I've already told in the previous tutorial that Firebase is, uh, has already implemented all the infrastructure. So we do not need to write the whole code. We can just use their documentation and we can just edit the code and use it in our application, right? So it's super easy to use. First of all, you need to visit this website and you will have to uh, go to the documentation. I will give the link to this website, to this whole link in the description of this video. So firebase.google.com slash docs slash auth. And here in the Android section, you can see a password authentication option. So you need to click here. Now it will tell you that you will have to add Firebase to your Android project, which we have already done. And we will have to enable the sign in, which we have done. Now, the next important step is to use the uh, Firebase Android uh, BOM and we have to declare it uh, this whole Android library in the module, which is the app level Gradle file, right? App slash build dot Gradle. So, right. So we have now uh, the Firebase authentication library in our project. So now we are go uh, good to go. We can now register our user here. But before doing that, make sure you sync now, because if you won't sync, it won't allow the uh, library that we have used in the main activity, right? So I'm just going to quickly sync to this project. And by the time it syncs, let's take a look at the documentation. So here it says create a password based account. And here you can see uh, in order to create a new user account with a password, we will have to complete these steps. So let's move on to the very first step, which is a very important step. It says that in the on create method, you need to create a shared instance of Firebase uh, auth object. So Firebase auth is a predefined class. 
and basically this class is actually coming from the library that we just imported which is this one and here we will have to create a variable which is a private variable mauth and we will have to get an instance of this firebase authentication library so that's our very first step so let's perform this step i'm just going to copy this and let's move on to our android studio and uh, it has finished the gradle gradle sync and we have the variables part here so i'm going to just paste it here and now it you can see it shows that uh, com.google.firebase.auth is the library that this class is using so press alt enter and it will quickly import it for you right so now it is imported now let's create an instance of this mauth object in the on create function right so mauth is equals to you can see here firebase auth dot get instance right so firebase auth and it shows already this one right so now we have the instance of the firebase authentication in this variable mauth and now if we want to create a particular uh, user with some email and some password and you know that we have added the email and password here right so m email and m password are the fields uh, which has the email and password and we are now going to use this mauth object to add the entries right so uh, let's move on to the second step here you can see uh, you can skip the second step right let's move on to this fourth step which is the important one which is the create user with email and password right so this is a predefined function of this uh, firebase auth library we are going to call it using mauth dot create user with email and password and here we need to provide the email and password of the uh, whatever the email and password is the user has entered in the fields right so here i'm going to copy this whole thing and i will also explain this whole thing because it is very important that whatever you are copying you should also understand it first of all we are registering the to the firebase so it will come in the firebase function i'm going to paste it here and here just press Control enter sorry alt enter to import all the required libraries right just keep pressing alt enter until and unless all the libraries are added all right so now you can see we have added all the libraries uh, we have a update ui function right which will update the ui and basically here what we are going to do is when the uh, email and password has been registered we are going to uh, kill this main activity and we will redirect it to some other activity which I will call as a user activity, which will be the main interface of this application, right? So uh, here I'm just going to comment this out. And here also I'm going to do the same in the above function, which is here, which is task. If task is successful, we are going to show here authentication success, right? So instead of writing authentication success, I will write user registered successfully right or just use the registered right so we have the lock at here now you can see uh, this is the mauth dot create user with email and password and we haven't defined the email and password we will have to take these values from the edit text of this activity main dot xml right so you can see these are the two uh, input edit text so we we will have to get the values from here so let's see how we can actually do that uh, let me explain you this function here this is the dot add on complete listener right so when this task of creating the user is completed this function is automatically called and here if i hover my mouse you can replace it with lambda now uh, if you have uh, no idea about what a lambda is basically it is a very useful feature i have created a tutorial on lambdas in java uh, i will give it the link to that also in the description and also in i button here right so now let's move on to to our very last step which is to provide the email and password from the edit text right so how we're going to do that is you can see we have r.id.register case here 
so here i will i want to provide the email and password so i'm going to create two variables here right i will create two string variables because email and password is basically strings only so email comma password which we are going to pass to the use uh, to the to this register to firebase function and here we have the m email and m password so now let's see how we can get the text from these input text when the user clicks on the button right so here we will have to make sure that when this button is clicked email is equals to m email dot get edit text function and we're going to close this right and now you can see it is showing a, a red line here which means there is some problem here and the problem is that this email is actually a string and this get edit text is a function which here we need to write get text right and now we will have to convert it to the string so i will use the to string function to do to do that and instead of using get text you can also just write get edit text dot to string i think that will also work right so it says that this may produce null pointer exception we will come to this null pointer exception in a later bit so if a user is trying to uh, add an email in the email part if the user has not entered anything uh, this will create a null pointer exception in java because actually this email is uh, there is nothing inside of the email so we will have to validate the user also uh, which we will cover in a separate tutorial which will be the user validation i've already told you in the very previous tutorials that we need to validate whatever the user uh, is going to add in the email so that so that the format of the email will be correct right now in the password one i'm going to use m password dot get edit text dot to string method right and now we have the email and password and that that is what we are going to pass to this function right so now there are some more errors in this one let's resolve these errors here you can see we have an error which says that the tag has a private access okay uh, we can just remove these lockcat messages because we are already using this toast messages so we don't require these now let's run the app and understand whether the user is registered or not so let's run this and in the emulator it will run the application all right so at this point i uh, i can see that there is an error which says uh, file google services dot json is missing and this is due to a very huge mistake that i have made here the google services dot json should come under the app directory and not the root level directory right so i will cut this from here and then i will go to the app and i will paste it here and i will refactor it and now we have the google services dot json here now let's run this program again all right so here the application has been launched uh, now let's write some email address here i will write anything in this because we are not doing the validation and again in the password i am entering something and now i will click the register button and now you can see it shows authentication failed now at this point you actually as an android developer you don't know why this uh, task is not getting successful so you will have to find it out so the way to do is instead of writing this text which is authentication failed what i'm going to do is i'm going to write here task dot get exception right and i will write two string which will convert the whole exception into a string so here i'm getting what exactly is the problem that is coming out of this whole uh, method which is the create user with email and password so as an android developer you should know how to debug the application now what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this again and let's run this app again and let's see what exactly is the exception that is coming so here i will write some email and just some password and let's click the register button 
So you can see here it shows the email address is badly formatted, right? So I will click here and you can see that it shows the email address is badly formatted. This Firebase is actually helping us in validation the email and password. So we do not need to write the explicit code to validate the email, right? So the if the user will add something which is not an email address, right? So it should be like vishal at the rate gmail.com and here i will write some password right anything in the password or i will write my name in the password and here again i will click register now you can see that it it is again showing me the same message which is the email address is badly formatted and here i have uh, i can see that this email and password are the variable and basically the problem is with this variable only this email i will have to write here dot get text to get the text from this edit text so i will have to do it here also right and now now here we have done we are getting the text of the email and password and now we are passing it here now i am going to run this app again to see what will be the status now all right so in the emulator it will launch the activity and now here i am going to add right some valid email address which i'll add the rate uh, gmail.com and inside the password i will write let let's try only two characters right Let's see whether Firebase is actually take considering the password field as a security purpose or not. So I will click register button and you can see here it says that the given password is invalid. It should be at least six characters, right? So it is very good that we do not actually need to do a lot of user these input validation. Firebase is already doing it for us. So I'm just going to write here something which has six characters right so i will write here vishal123 and now i'm going to click register button so let's click on register and now you can see it displays the message that the user has been successfully registered right now how to know whether the user is registered we are going to just go on the browser and you can see here uh, we will have to refresh it just refresh this page and you will be able to see a user right so you can see here that there is a user with the email address vishal at the rate gmail.com and the provider is email only so that's all for this tutorial thanks for watching